Okay, I think we will start. Um, warmest welcome uh, to the Celtic Knot Conference um, from the organizers, Wikimedia UK and Wikimedia Deutschland. Um, I'm Daria Subulska, I'm the Director of Programs at Wikimedia UK, and with me are my colleagues Richard Neville and Lea Lacroix. Hello. <laughs> uh, you'll hear from them shortly. Uh, for now, just to say, this conference uh, is run primarily on Zoom. Uh, just this introductory session is streamed on YouTube. So if you're not registered, uh, please do so, so you can get access to the sessions. They will be run in webinar format. You don't have to participate actively. Uh, next slide. Um, so just to quickly explain, uh, our idea for the conference, uh, Wikimedia UK, has been running an event called Celtic Knot Conference since 2017 in collaboration with various minoritized language communities. It's been focused on the Celtic language community, but has always been open to any group uh, that's underrepresented and under-resourced as a language community or as a group on uh, wiki projects. Moving online uh, two years ago allowed us to expand participation. Uh, last year, we collaborated with colleagues uh, from Norway on the Arctic Knot conference. And this year, um, as organizers, we decided to open the conference really broadly to any Wikimedian, uh, new or longstanding, from an underrepresented language community who wants to learn, support each other and exchange on topics such as community growth or technical tools. And indeed, I'm really pleased to see that we have uh, a lot of communities joining us today from uh, languages such as Igbo, Dagbani, Yoruba, Tui, More, uh, Tagalog or Suleti, uh, as well as uh, Irish, Welsh, Catalan or Galician. I really hope that this uh, group of people will find new and interesting ways of uh, exchanging and learning together. Um, as organizers, we are quite aware that the novelty of an online conference uh, has worn off if it ever existed. So for accessibility, we have decided to keep this conference as online but offered a new format uh, based on learning workshops and skill development. And we hope it's going to be interesting for you. And now over to my colleague Leah to explain that format a bit more. Hello, everyone, and welcome. So yes, let's have a look at the program of these two days of conference. So you will find uh, the program on Wiki. And here's what it's going to look like today. So we're currently having this little opening. And don't miss what's coming just after that. We're going to have a selection of the presentations that various um, communities working on minoritized languages have been preparing for the Celtic Knot. Then after a short break, we're going to jump to our first very exciting workshop that is about community growth. And we're going to listen to Tochi and Isaac, who both have a lot of experience to share with us about how to grow um, your community. Then after a break that you can use, for example, to have some food, have some fresh air, or also to watch some of the um, asynchronous videos that we're proposing, um, we will have a second workshop that is how to organize or join an editing campaign. And here we have a huge uh, diversity of speakers who have been running editing campaigns for a while. And we will have a practical part where you can um, help us building what is the ideal checklist to prepare and organize an editing campaign. Then after another break to definitely take some fresh air, um, we will regroup for a discussion. And this is a quite important part of the Celtic Knot, because this is the moment where you will be able to talk to each other and bring all of the topics that are important for you and your community. And we will have this open discussion space where you can um, yeah, exchange on any topic that you want. Don't forget that the times displayed um, on the schedule are in UTC. 
And again, if you're not registered yet, um, please do it now so you can receive the access links before the beginning of the workshops. Now, looking at the second day, we will also have a quite exciting program. Tomorrow is, let's say, maybe a bit more of the Wikidata day. So we're going to start with a workshop about Databox, that is this Wikidata-powered info box that you can very easily install on your wiki and then display on articles. And we will have two very experienced speakers, Sadiq and Dian Chitobu, who are going to explain you step by step how to do it. And by the end of this workshop, hopefully you will have installed Databox on your wiki and um, on a few articles. Then after a break, we will have a second workshop about translating Wikidata properties in your languages. And again, with some experienced um, speakers, you will be able to learn how to edit Wikidata, how to um, add some new translations in your languages, and, um, and how it can be immediately useful on your wiki. And then, as we will already approach the end of the event, we will have a wrap up and we will have a social event. And um, I'm pretty excited to uh, offer you this uh, social event where you will be able to have uh, games and fun around languages. We will welcome Norbert from the um, YouTube channel Ecolinguist that you maybe already know, and you will be able to join some very fun language challenges. So once again, don't forget to register if you want to attend all of these events that are going to taking place on Zoom. Now, to go a little bit further on the format. So as you see, we decided to have a quite light format focused on the workshops, and we really hope that you can take something useful out of it. We're also experimenting on two different types of participants. Some people have been able to sign up as active participants, uh, which means that they will be able to interact directly with the speakers. But everyone is welcome to the workshops anyway to be able to follow what's happening. The workshops are going to be recorded in video and we will upload them shortly after the event. As for the discussion and social gathering, they are of course open to full participation for everyone. On top of that, we have a lot of content that you can watch between the sessions or even after the conference. We prepared for you a selection of videos from previous Calicnot conferences, but also some interesting introductions to Wikidata or other projects that you can check at any point. And um, unfortunately, um, we had to set up most of the content in English to make sure that everyone can understand. Um, but we always make sure that the speakers um, speak in a way that is understandable for all. And most videos will have eventually um, English subtitles to help you follow along. And finally, to stay in touch with um, the participant of the conference, we have Telegram channels that you can join. We also have a public participant list if you want to add yourself there and get in touch with other people. You can, of course, look at the program again. If you're on social media, don't hesitate to tweet or post or whatever with the hashtag CelticNode2022. And don't forget to have a look also at our satellite events because a bunch of people from the community have been preparing online or on-site events taking place, most of them after the conference, um, in plenty of different countries. So have a look. Thank you very much and see you later at the conference. And just the uh, last piece for me now. Uh, so uh, friendly space uh, policy applies to this conference. Um, please follow the link to, to see our full policy. But just briefly for me now, um, as an organizing team, we're dedicated to providing a harassment free space and a conference experience for everybody, regardless of gender, sexual orientation, gender identity or expression, disability, uh, physical appearance, age, race, ethnicity, political affiliation, national origin, religion, and it's not limited to those aspects. Um, we don't tolerate any form of harassment of conference participants. Uh, sexual language and imagery is not appropriate for uh, any conference space or talks. Any participants violating these rules may be uh, sanctioned. Um, Conversely, uh, the sort of um, 
behaviors that we're hoping uh, people will um, follow for the conference is uh, encouraging a positive and friendly space, valuing each other's ideas and viewpoints, respecting people's privacy and not sharing or disclosing private information about others uh, without their consent. Um, being mindful of the space people are taking and leaving enough space for others to participate. Um, and I guess lastly, as uh, Leo was saying, um, this conference is run through the medium of English. So we're hoping uh, people will speak slowly so that everybody can understand. Um, we do have a friendly space uh, officer, uh, Stuart, you can see him on the picture here in flesh at the conference a few years ago. And uh, if you're uncomfortable or you feel any of our uh, friendly space policies are being broken, uh, please do get in touch with him. Uh, there is Telegram handle here and his email as well. Um, that's it from me. And now over to Richard to introduce our next segment. Excellent. So just a reminder that registration is still open. Uh, you can scan that QR code there or follow the short bit.ly link there. I'll just leave that up for a moment in case there's anyone here who would like to do so since we're on YouTube. Um, but the next section is going to be a series of videos from the community. Um, and it's really important for us because it's all about hearing what people have been getting up to over the last year or so. Uh, there are some familiar faces amongst the updates and some new people as well. Uh, it's a lovely mixture. Okay, so I will stop that screen sharing now. There we go. So first up, uh, we have an update from uh, the Welsh Wikipedia community. So they held the second ever Celtic Knot. Uh, so it's, it's always good to hear from them and what it is they're up to. Uh, and they've done some really interesting stuff as well. They do a lot with Wikipedia, of course, uh, and they're also doing uh, lots of activities with Wikidata. And really interestingly, they are engaging with lots of uh, open communities, such as OpenStreetMap. And so the Welsh Wikipedia is becoming an integral part of open knowledge online. So I think that's enough of an introduction. And now let's hear from the Welsh Wikipedia community. Hi, hello. I'm Jason Evans. I'm the Open Data Manager and the National Wikimedian at the National Library of Wales. We focus our work mainly on Welsh language work on wiki projects, including Wikipedia itself, Wiki Commons, and uh, increasingly Wikidata. Over the last seven or eight years, we've been lucky enough to receive Welsh government support and funding for a number of Welsh uh, Wikipedia projects, and this has led to dozens and dozens of editathons, public workshops, thousands of new articles on the Welsh language Wikipedia. And the National Library of Wales has shared over 20,000 images from its collections on Wikimedia Commons. And we've made great use of Wikidata as a platform for sharing our metadata openly and freely and for improving the Welsh language accessibility of our data. Currently, we're focusing on Welsh place names, and there's a real need for more information about Welsh place names, more use of Welsh place names on with the projects on Wikidata, and more articles on the Welsh language Wikipedia. And part of the way that we're overcoming this challenge is through virtual crowdsourcing projects, where we're asking people remotely to contribute to Wikidata, to increase the use of Welsh language labels, and our remote volunteers are creating Welsh language Wikipedia articles. And we're really excited about the new phase of this project where we're going to be creating hundreds of Welsh language Wikipedia articles that um, are missing for Welsh places. And we're going to be creating with our partners, Mentevi Aeth Morn, hundreds of sound clips um, that will be added to Wikidata, the pronunciation of local Welsh place names and we're going to be developing further this idea of a Welsh language mapping interface 
that draws on data from both Wikidata and OpenStreetMap. And this is all in the name of trying to create knowledge equity so that people have the same facilities, the same technologies, both in Welsh as they do in English. So I'd really love to hear from you if you have any thoughts, questions, or just want to chat during or after the conference, so please do contact me. Jolham Grando, I'm an Elk and Adlet. Excellent. Um, so just a quick note. Uh, we do have an awful lot of videos that were submitted from the community, more than could be fitted into this session. Um, so do please check out the Wikimedia UK YouTube channel and find more of those updates. They are all worth your while. It's so great to hear from the communities. Um, the videos will have uh, English subtitles. Uh, I hope that helps. Um, I realize that on this screen, they are a tad on the small side but hopefully we can work with that. So next up, we have an update from Wikimedia Island. Now they've been doing something also very interesting as well. Um, it's an international collaboration. I think that speaks really well to what the Celtic Knot is about. So I will get that video loaded up. Hi everyone, I'm Rebecca O'Neill, the Project Coordinator for Wikimedia Community Ireland. I'm going to talk to you about a new Erasmus project we have started in 2022 called Wikimedia. Wikimedia Community Ireland was created in 2014 by a group of enthusiastic Wikimedians who met at the first Edgethon hosted in Ireland, which marked the millennium of the Battle of Clinturf. We are now a group of 12 to 15 active core volunteers who work across Wikimedia projects, supported by one staff member, me. Increasingly, our work has moved more and more into promoting the use of the Irish language, Wikipedia, Wikipedia, as well as the use of the Irish language on projects such as Wikimedia Commons and Wikidata. Irish is an official language of both Ireland and the European Union, and is taught in schools from ages 4 to 18. However, only about 1% of the Irish population speak Irish daily or live their lives through Irish. We believe that supporting more Irish on Wikimedia projects is key to supporting those who live through Irish and encourage more to feel empowered to do the same. In 2020, I was interviewed by this podcast, Europeans, to speak about the gender gap on Wikipedia. Having heard that episode, Simon Tubb of Learning the Pub Friesland contacted me about a possible collaboration with organisations in Friesland through the Erasmus Plus EU programme. The core idea was to get students to edit or create articles about women in their minority language Wikipedia. We contacted the Basque Wikimedia user group as they have a well-established relationship with local schools that gives them expertise in delivering the sort of programming that we envisage. We worked on a proposal that would build into established best practice um, from across the Wikimedia movement from 2020 and in late 2021 we received confirmation that our proposal was successful. The project, called Wiki Women, is inspired by numerous initiatives from across the movement, but in particular, Women in Red. It is centred on three languages, Basque, Irish and Frisian, which are all minority languages within their countries. A central aim is to focus on writing biographies of women with particular relevance to their local context, and to raise awareness of the importance of their language and these histories with student editors and the language group more widely. The funding was received through the Erasmus Plus programme, Cooperation, Partnerships and School Education for Fall 2021 in the context of field school education. There are seven named partner organisations spread across three regions. Learning Hub Friesland, Afuk Friesk Academy in Friesland, Euroscal Wiki Laren Kultur El Carta in, and Institute Antigua Liberia BHI in the Basque Country and Wikimedia Community Ireland in Colossal Oriel in Ireland. We have stated aims and outcomes for this project, which include the project will bring together schools, Wikimedia projects, and language organisations in minority language regions of Europe to use Wikipedia as a tool to teach digital literacy, social engagement, and language skills. 
We aim to create a new generation of secondary school pupils who are equipped with the vital digital and research skills that they will need for a future in the future, empowered to work and produce content in their minority language and engage in social issues such as gender equality and the wider position of their language community. Over the next three years, we have a schedule of virtual and in-person events for both project partners, but also the groups of students and teachers involved. The first major event is taking place this week from the 27th of June to the 1st of July, 2022, with a Wikimedia Bootcamp in San Sebastian in the Basque Country for all the teachers and educators involved in the project. Wikimedians from the Basque Country and Ireland will give the participants a crash course in all things Wikimedia, from making their first edits to uploading images and using the average dashboard in their own languages. There are three student trips planned in 2023 and 2024, which will see the students visit each other to work on their articles about women. At the end of this project, a major outcome is the development of three packs, pupil materials, a school's toolkit, and a GLAM toolkit, which can be reused, localized, and adapted for use in other minority languages to empower students, educators, and GLAM professionals to launch their own wiki women projects in their own language communities. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference. Please get in touch if you want to discuss anything further with me by email or on Twitter. Thank you. So that was another community as well who um, hosted an edition of the Celtic Knot two years ago, the first time we did it online. Now, Next up, we have a new voice in the community. So we're hearing from Wikimedia community in Kashmir. Um, they've had an important couple of years um, and they've faced uh, some challenges with Wikimedia, which I think will be very familiar with this community and the ways in which they've been dealing with those and overcoming them. Uh, so it's another very interesting contribution. is an Indo-Aryan language of the Arctic subgroup. It's spoken by over 7 million people, primarily in the region of Kashmir. Uh, geographically, Kashmir is the northwestern region of the Indian subcontinent. Uh, this uh, language has three scripts, uh, Sharda script, Pakshu Arabic script, and Devangiri script. However, Persian Arabic script is the official script in Jammu and Kashmir. This language is also spoken in some parts of Pakistan. And it's mainly spoken in Jammu and Kashmir, United Tree of India. If we talk about Kashmiri Wikipedia, it was started back in 2004 by some volunteers, but it had remained underdeveloped since then. There has been very little activity on this Wikipedia in past years, but since 2021, activity started to regain momentum and we finally managed to cross 1000 plus articles. We as a community have marked some of the reasons behind its slow development. They include less knowledge about Wikipedia in local communities, half-translated interface, Problems with keyboards, as not all keyboards support Kashmiri language characters. Besides, we have no help page to support beginners. In recent years, we took some steps to overcome these challenges. They include personal efforts to spread awareness about Kashmiri Wikipedia, 
we created some of the high quality and diverse content to attract the new users. We have also created social handles for our wiki so that people can reach directly to us. We also try to organize online events and training sessions. One of the main events that took place recently was an online editing competition. With the help of Center of Internet and Society, Access to Knowledge, we managed to organize first online editing competition. The competition was organized between 1st June to 7th June. We got a huge response from the new editors and we created some of the high quality pages. The motive of this event was to build community engagement. We face some of the challenges that we find hard to uh, overcome. These include less help pages. Because we have very less help pages, there are some editors who find very hard to mix with the environment of this wiki. And uh, there are no tutorials to support them. We also have no institutional involvement so that we can create more content. We want you people to support us so that we can create a better way. Thank you for listening to the story of Kashmiri Wikipedia. Thank you all. Have a good day. I'm sure that will be very familiar to some of our communities indeed. And it's very encouraging to hear how the Kashmiri Wikipedia are continuing to work and grow their content. So in the background, I'm just handling a couple of things. Okay, so next we have a message, or rather an update from the European language equality project and this is really interesting because we've had uh, a mixture of updates from communities working with one language and some communities who work with various groups as well and i think that shows just how well people and organizations can collaborate and the value in doing so Now I'm loading up the video and at the same time, see if I can magnify the captions. I know how to do it on the app. The question is, can I do it on the web browser? Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and my greeting from Cambodia. Okay, so bear with me. Found the setting. Okay, we are good to go. So let's see. Just start sharing the video. Some of you who were at the Archipelag last year remember me um, when I was talking about the executive project as well. And we're still trying and aiming to enable all European languages, regardless of the number of speakers, of the current presence of them in the, on the internet, to achieve full digital equality by 2030. And we want the European Union and the European Commission to take action and support, especially on the resource languages. Um, for this, um, 53 European organizations, which are consisting of language associations, universities, industry players, uh, community-driven organizations like us, 
for all of them to come together and by the end of the project, which um, is June 2022, to have a strategic agenda with some targeted action points and maybe even some focal points for funding. All of those organizations have been working on um, creating a rather comprehensive information basis of language reports, of deep dives, but also um, of other reports. And for all of this, to um, make up this roadmap and agenda for the European Commission. One big thing that we also want um, from this project is um, a big new funding program that is designed to actually help under-resourced, small, regional or minority languages in Europe. And we can also, we can already show off some cool stuff that came out of this project. Uh, one of them being a report from the Wikimedia communities that we've been compiling. So we've been asking community members for their input on conferences, through surveys, um, what kind of gaps and problems they see when working with their languages online, but also what kind of visions they have for the future. Maybe not surprising, <laughs> one reoccurring topic was the lack of open source material, which holds especially true for minority languages. But also um, a reoccurring issue was that uh, people would want um, more um, language experts and more people speaking those languages to contribute to their languages online, for example, through the language version Wikipedia of their own languages. Another um, cool outcome out of this is, a Euro is the European Language Group, which is basically, basically a platform that has all kinds of tools and technologies and services uh, data sets, uh, which is a collection of all those things for um, different languages. And um, we can just have a peek at this real quick. So um, you can distinguish between um, language technologies, but also uh, data and resources, and let's say community, which is projects and organizations. You can go through a catalog, you have some top categories. Um, for example, if you're looking for machine, translation for a very specific language you can do this here um, and you will have some search results uh, with the, the, the licenses and the languages tagged here um, so if you're interested in this have a look um, and check it out we also have the before mentioned language reports um, all of this is on the website so if you if you're interested in reading about uh, one specific language, you can do this. And actually, those language reports were used to create a cool dashboard. So if you like data visual visualization, just like I do, um, you can also check this out. We have a map where you can have a look where certain languages are the um, primary or secondary languages, but you can also have a comparison between languages and the kind of uh, data sets and technologies available for this and with this I want to say thank you um, please reach out to me if you have any kind of feedback or questions and thank you for listening excellent so a really interesting way of highlighting particular resources um, across communities there. I think that can be a really powerful way to advocate for more resources as well. So next up, we have an update from the Bafana Center. And they're doing something a little bit different, which I really like. So they've been working with uh, youth groups, which I think is really important, giving people the skills to engage with Wikimedia projects and helping them uh, do things online is really important. And as well as that, they're also doing some filmmaking as well. So using a different kind of approach, uh, which I think is really dynamic and a great way of documenting um, their knowledge and their culture. So over to the Bafana Center. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and my greeting from Cambodia. 
It is my pleasure and honor to be with you today and to present you the project building capacity of, for indigenous youth and establishing indigenous audiovisual archive through Wikimedia tool in Cambodia, which has been funded by Wikimedia foundations. To start this, I would like to express my sincere thank and appreciation to Wikimedia Foundation and the team for the generous Apologies, I'm pausing that briefly so I can enlarge the captions. There we go. Support and make this project happen. My thanks also go to our partners, UNESCO Bangkok and the team Memory of the World for Asia Pacific's MOOCAPS, Mr. Culture and Fine Art of Cambodia, and many others that I cannot record their names. With funding support from Wikimedia Foundations, this project aims to use Wikimedia tool and platform to build an open access indigenous audiovisual archive to preserve, protect, and revitalize the indigenous languages in Cambodia. And this project also perfectly celebrate the International Decade of Indigenous Languages of 2022-2032, which was declared by United Nations General Assembly as the International Decade of Indigenous Languages to draw attention to critical status of many indigenous languages across the world and encourage actions for preservation, revitalization, and promotions. In July last year, 2021, our project started and we selected 30 youth, 16 of them per woman from five indigenous community, including Tampun, Jarai, Krung, Kajak, and Pro, to join a documentary film training program, which took place in the home community of Ratanakiri province, which is the northeastern province of Cambodia. After intensive trainings, Indigenous youth started to document their community on a variety of topics, including arts, environmental issues, cultural practice, spiritual belief, relationship between indigenous community and nature. The recording are in their own languages. I think that the film you watch today will nicely discuss the cultural practice or art of making wine of the Tempun ethnic minority. However, and sadly, this art of making wine almost disappeared from everyday life of the indigenous community because of many internal and external factors. It was a fortunate that our trainee, Ramit Nguyen, was able to document this art, which is practiced by his own family. Only his mother in the community know how to make this original and traditional method of making just wine. As the result of the project, 25 short documentary film and more than 10 pieces of audiovisual record were made in five different languages. And last month in February, with support from Wikimedia team, Sadib Jill, especially, Opana Center and UNESCO invited you to come to Phnom Penh and train them on how to use Wikimedia tool to disseminate their films. Some of you found it first time to be in Phnom Penh and they make some visit to the National Museum and to the other cultural site in Phnom Penh. After the training, they uploaded their film successfully and happily on Wikimedia Common platform. This film now become great learning and teaching resources for researcher, cultural activists, scholar, filmmaker, or those who are interested in the content. Recently, some of this short film has been selected to showcase in the local cultural festival taking place in Phnom Penh and also followed by great discussion with filmmakers and audiences. Last week, UNESCO Cambodia and Ministry of Culture and Fine Arts also selected a film to screen for 150 audiences, including indigenous community from other parts of the country, UNESCO staff, and local authority and other officials from Ministry of Culture and Fine Arts 
We will also continue to disseminate this content to wider audiences. Even we may create success and satisfactory with the outcome of the project. We really went through the main challenges, including natural disasters and the spread of COVID-19. In November last year, there was a heavy rainstorm in Ratanakiri, where our training and film production took place. Some roads were flooded, some land bridges were broken, and some roads were slippery. Travel connection from one place to another was cut, so that our students had difficulty and causing some delay of the work. The temperature over there went up and down, causing some health issue. And I think that this is the negative impact of the climate change on our life. Our next plan is that we would like to continue this project, supporting other indigenous youth to document their community. Since some arts and cultural practice and livelihood are critically threatened of being in danger. Some form of art and culture practice will disappear soon. It is urgent to document them before they are gone. Again, I would like to take this opportunity to thank Wikimedia Foundation and the team for the support. Yes, another community who's doing some very important work as well. So we have one more video update. Um, and just to remind you, of course, that we do have more videos as well uh, on our YouTube channel. Um, some themes are recurring through that. And it was, I must say, very difficult to choose which videos we'd be using in this particular section. Uh, next up, we'll be hearing from the Dagbani community um, and how they've been reaching out to new Wikipedia editors. Um, so let's get started. Hello, you are welcome to Celtic North Conference 2022. Uh, in Dagani, I will see Amara Abana Celtic North Conference 2022. My name is Sadiq Shahadu. I'm the executive director and co-founder of the Dagani Wikimedians user group, um, also serving as the West African language coordinator at Art and Film Music. Also, uh, I am a member of the steering committee for the Wikimedia Language Diversity Hub. And uh, as a member of the committee, we work to support local language Wikimedia communities. Also at Art and Film Music, I work with West African languages to improve the content of local language Wikipedia and also support um, the language communities to grow. Uh, with the Dagbani, I work to support the Dagbani language Wikipedia and all the other 16 Moli Dagbani languages. Um, currently, we have the Bruni and the Mori language uh, Wikipedia incubators, which have recently been active, and uh, you know the community have been able to translate all the most commonly used messages on, on media wiki, wiki which is great uh, so with the Dagan wikipedia one of the most exciting projects we've done recently is the uh, you know Dagan wikipedia uh, it is a tele-education program dedicated to teaching wikipedia in Dagan, and we use this um, to train people on how to contribute to wikipedia especially those who do not have access to internet to connect to our online meetings or also those who are far away and cannot have um you know do, and do, do not have the opportunity to travel to our workshop venues to participate in our uh, wikipedia editathons and uh, you know workshops one of the challenges we faced uh with the the random wikipedia SAR program was um, the training models uh, it was difficult to locally like design the training models so what we did was to adapt the wiki edu um, student training learning models and uh, by adapting that we were able to localize that into um, our own local language and also we've been able to do the training in the the band language so that people can you know understand the program or also like they will be able to learn how to edit wikipedia in their own local language so these are some of the most exciting things we've been doing and for the other languages like the Pune and the Mori wikipedia 
they've been working so hard to improve the quantity of um, and quality of articles on their various incubators. So this is all that I do for the Dabani Multimedia Media Group, which works to support all the system with Dabani languages spoken in Ghana, Benin, and Burkina Faso. Um, I'm really excited to be part of this, um, you know, year's um, Celtic North Conference and also being part of the Wikimedia Language Steering Committee. I am very excited and we look forward to supporting more other African languages and also those who want to you know, learn what we do with the Daban to be the SAHAD TV program you can reach out to me um, on social media, Sadiq Shahadu, or send me a message um, or email at Sadiq Shahadu at artandfeminism.org. Thank you so much. Bye bye. <laughs> I think it's hugely impressive just how many languages many of these communities are working with. That shows real skill and there's a, a lot of passion amongst these groups. Uh, in that video, there was a mention of the Language Diversity Hub. Um, there's an update about that in the video pool as well, which is well worth checking out, along with, I think it must be at least another half dozen other videos. So folks, that wraps up this particular session. So those are a selection of the updates from the community. There are more out there. The next part of the conference begins at, he says, reaching for the right printout uh, in about 13 minutes. So I'm going to head off and uh, prepare for that workshop, welcome the active participants, and I hope to see a lot of you there shortly. So have uh, a good rest of the conference, folks. I'll be seeing you soon.